I am here with Dr. Trevor Berry, who's a board certified chiropractic neurologist. He has over, I'd say, 2,000 hours of postdoctorate education in neurological fields such as vestibular and balance disorders, traumatic brain injury, pain management, and neurodegenerative disorders, as well as functional medicine. Dr. Berry has uh, been a partner with B2B Health Systems, where he lectures nationally and internationally and consults regarding functional neurology, functional medicine, laboratory testing and interpretation, laser therapy, and more. Boy, some of those words are hard for me to get out, and I've had some training in this, So, but it's nice to have you here, Dr. Barry. Uh, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me, Diane. I'm excited to be here with you. Well, this is going to be f fascinating because I know you, and I have a few people on my show that I've known, and you are a very smart guy, I have to say, and I'm very fascinated in your new uh, endeavor which is this B2B health systems. And I don't know if you want to start there or you want to give a background of how you got to that point. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of both, um, you know, on how, on how I got to that point. Uh, you know, with, with my background in neurology, I've been uh, doing lots of work uh, both clinically and in the field of research in, in helping understanding neurological conditions and, and different clinical applications that are being used in modern medicine to, uh, to uh, to help address some of these, you know, these growing concerns that we have in the field of neurology. So uh, through that, you know, you start to develop different partnerships and, and different relationships. And so uh, as I started doing more research, I started getting involved with a low-level laser company that is doing just excellent work in FDA studies on different neurological conditions, and that's Ericonia Laser. So um, my relationship with them has developed to the point now where I, I kind of head up their neuro uh, you know, lecturing and, and, and some of the research projects that we have going on right now, as well as uh, a new and up-and-coming lab company uh, called Vibrant Healthcare, or Vibrant Wellness, Vibrant America. They have different divisions for their, um, their product. And, and so they are a, uh, they're, they're, they're actually a microchip technology from the guys yeah. that did the Pentium 3 chip uh, developed this this new technology that's going to be completely revolutionizing the lab industry. So I'm I'm doing some neurology consulting with them as well. And so from that, we just wanted to start to get the message out uh, to the healthcare field because we are in such an epidemic right now with these neurological conditions. The top ten neurological conditions in in the United States are are quickly approaching a one trillion dollar economic burden, wow. which could you know it could. It completely destabilize our economy. So, um, Alzheimer's alone is I mean, right now it sits at around two hundred and fifty billion dollars per year, and uh, it's on pace. If we don't do something to curb that, it's on pace by itself to become a one trillion dollar burden by about twenty fifty. So, my my main focus is to um, you know address those types of conditions and see if we can turn that ship around before it's too late. Well, okay, that's a lot of uh, neurological conditions. I mean, what is causing it? Does anybody know what's causing all this? Is it getting to be more than in the past? And is it what we're eating? Is it the environment? What? Yeah, you brought up a great point there. It, 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 I, I want to say this: there's not one smoking gun, um, and it's just like the therapies for it. Um, there's not one single answer to all of this because it's such a multi-layered approach. Um, to anything that's going to actually help because there, there's so many different layers that happen in those neurological conditions. You, you need to be able to address all of those layers and not just try and come at it with a monotherapy. Well, it's the same thing with the causes or the etiology. Is that, um, the, we, we, we're under so much environmental stress right now. Um, obviously, you brought up the food source. that, that we, we, we are seeing the connection there between that. Um, everything from you know possibly chemical stressors in our food sources um, the processing of foods, the different additives, the potential for the, you know, hybridization of the foods, um, genetically modified stuff, things like that. There, there's, there seems to be a, a growing concern that those, those types of sources are definitely contributing to the neurodegenerative change. Another big one is, um, you know, and you may have saw the study, seen the study that just came out not too long ago. This study showed that one diet drink a day will increase your risk of dementia by threefold. And that it has to do with a receptor in the brain cells called an NMDA receptor. So there are certain chemicals that trigger these these pathophysiological events, and and that that can definitely be food based as well. So um, I don't want to say there's just one one issue out there. Another big thing though that I, I see a, lo a lot with Americans, and that this has been shown in multiple studies, is the amount of sugar we consume. 
um, you know, we're, we're sugar addicts in this country. And, and there is w- without a doubt, uh, sugar wreaks havoc with a lot of the brain chemistry, you know, with amyloid beta burden, which is one of the hallmark signs of Alzheimer's and things like that. So, so there, it's multi-layered. There's not one single, like I said, there's not one smoking gun. We have to try and address as many of those layers as possible. Well, I just threw away my Diet Coke and chocolate bar. Thank you for that. <laughs> but, uh, your, I, snick, your Snickers, your yeah, Snickers that's, breakfast. That's right. But you know, it, 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 you know, you see all these studies, and I was just listening to a Neil deGrasse Tyson's uh, audio um, podcast that he did. You know, talking about GMOs and some of them maybe aren't so bad and then you read things that are bad and then they aren't you know it just depends on which study you read how do you know who to believe well i think it's the i guess the good question is there's a reason why so many countries in the world have either completely banned or at least partially banned or made mandatory labor labeling for genetic genetically engineered foods um and and don't get me wrong i, I get that there's natural hybridization that occurs and things like that but um you know I'm, I want to see true, independent, objective, double-blind RCT studies on this stuff because, you know, you, you see some the rise of celiac disease with the introduction of glyphosates, and, and you know, there seems to be a pretty direct correlation to, to the elevation. What are, what, what, well, what? that's, and again, I don't want to, you know, I, I, I'm not here to just bash one particular company or mm-hmm. anything like that, but mm-hmm. But at the same time, you, you, you start to look at, at correlation to things like the reuse of Roundup and the use and the, the rates of celiac disease. Um, you know, they talk about safe amounts of ingesting a, a toxin. And I, I, I personally, clinically, and just everything I've read in research, I don't see it that way. I don't know if there's a safe amount of Roundup we should be drinking or consuming. So um, that's just my opinion, but I think there's a lot of evidence that points to that, that and it's not just Roundup. Like I said, there's you know, across the board. We just have to watch our food sources. That's why when I, you know, all the neuro cases that I take on, I really promote them to try and eat as organically and local, like local farmers and whatnot as possible because it just helps with brain chemistry and, and brain function. Well, you get into a lot of different areas. I, I'm really curious because a lot of people probably um, are wondering, now, if, if you have a, a chiropractic background, how did you get into all of this? This is not your traditional focus for a tr- chiropractor, is it? Correct, yeah, <laughs> correct. Chiropractic by you know, trade is, is you know, I, I guess in a way you could see the correlation would be easy because when you look at complementary medicine, um, they do tend to take on that holistic whole body approach, which is kind of a dying thing in healthcare, right? Everyone's becoming so uber specialized, you know, they only do surgeries on left knees or things like that. So there is a a, a massive need or demand for doctors that can see the body as a whole still. And also chiropractic, it's, it's, it's underpinnings are based on neurological influences. So, there is a, a, a definite you know, underlying mechanism there that would blend itself well uh, to, to the neurology field. But with that said, and there was a lot of unanswered questions that I had going through school, which is why I went back and got my neurology degree. And that just helped really put, you know, pin down for me different things that were happening to the human nervous system when we, when we made certain applications. Because I think what needs to be stated is that we are a receptor-driven system, meaning our brain is basically a byproduct of what goes in dictates what comes back out. So when you look at that in, in that model, you have to understand that this is why movement is so important, why exercise is so important, why massage works, why acupuncture works, why chiropractic works, all these things, these, all these different types of either exercises or stimulation or modalities affect the central nervous system in a certain way, and then the nervous system can take that information and, and respond to it. And so when you combine that with what we fuel the brain with, i.e. our food sources, water intake, things like that, when you put those two together, that's what really promotes a healthy nervous system. So it does lend itself, it, there is a, a definite correlation. And then, you know, going through our advanced programs like the Carrick Institute program, for example, Dr. Carrick's kind of the, the forefather of functional neurology. Um, going through that, it really opened my eyes to what's available out there. And, and when you when you start looking at it in those, you know, in that higher neurological context, you can really start to take on cases that are are very difficult, complex cases. You know, such as these heavy, you know, traumatic brain injuries that are chronic, the um, you know, balance problems, the migraines, the the you know, the atypical facial pains, the 
the movement disorders, all these different neurological things, when you start to address the brain with brain-centered or brain-based rehab, you can start to get cases that you normally, I would say, the average clinician wouldn't be comfortable with handling. Well, I mean, I don't know if I've ever met a chiropractor that has this training that you have. Um, I mean, it's pretty intense. I, I used to sell migraine drugs, so I know how hard the neurological aspect is to, to study. So I, I, I know one-tenth of what you forgot the first week of class. But it's, it's really interesting to me to, to look at things like migraines because I, I sold Zomig, which was for migraines in a, in a long time ago. And it's just migraines are an interesting thing. And I'm curious if you think technology has any impact. I mean, looking at our cell phones and the lighting and the things like that, it, 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 how do you know what's causing things? If it, you know, is it tough to figure it out? Oh yeah, that's it, because you know, just for example, I may have a, a say a migraine patient that I see a definitive correlation to say a magnesium deficiency. Another one could be a more of a cervicogenic, meaning coming more from the cervical spine and the neck area, um, that that's more of the, the main culprit. So, you know, just because people present with the same end diagnosis does not mean that, that it's the exact same thing that, that is triggering all this stuff. And that's why you have to take that global perspective on understanding. You know, our, our studies, we study thyroid dysfunction. We study gut health and gut dysfunction because that's a you know a big culprit with a lot of the stuff that we're dealing with. We study anemia patterns and all the blood chemistry stuff. We study like so we we have to understand because when you're when you're dealing with brain, you can't miss any of the pieces of the puzzle because everything affects affects everything else. So you really have to have an appreciation or comprehension of basically every system. Um, and every physiological process in the human body to to adequately address brain-based stuff. Well, okay. So, what is is this? What you're doing? What's give me the B two B health systems? What exactly is that? What are you doing with them? Well, BTB is just a um, it's a oh, it's a B2B. big yeah. It's what what it is. It's it's um, myself, Dr. Brock, and Dr. Teams are have put together a program that um, we're going to help doctors throughout the world um, just, just start to take some of these concepts and apply them into their own practice. Because we're on a mission to help you know, change the, the way that all these neurological conditions are being um, treated, if you will. And uh, so we wanted to do something that was at a, a, a grand scale to get that message out to as many healthcare providers. And I, I'm not just talking in the, you know, in the complimentary, the CAM type, setting. We're, we're going to be in front of the medical community. We're going to be in front of nurse practitioners. We're going to be in front of, you know, we're, we're trying to bring in as many people as possible to make a unified front against some of these conditions. You know, um, you know, for me, it's a personal mission. My, my daughters, their, their mother's side of the family comes from a, a, a very strong genetic predilection for Alzheimer's. Um, it's an mm -hmm. APOE4 variant and you know, the audience won't know what that means, but that just means that they have greater than a 50, you know, with APOE4, if you're uh, homozygous, which means uh, both alleles in your chromosome are for, uh, that have APOE4, that means you have upwards of at least a 50% chance, if not, a, a, I've seen some research as high as 75, 80% chance of developing Alzheimer's. Oh. And so part of my mission personally is to do everything I can to protect them and, and do all the research and clinical stuff I can to, to protect them. So we all have our own reasons for this, but mm -hmm. we're, we're on a mission to try and educate as many healthcare providers of all different specialties as possible, just to help, you know, get the message out there that we, that stuff can be done about this. And I'll, I'll talk about it when we talk about some of the cases today. Well, I'd love to hear about some of your cases. I'm, um, I'm curious what's the B T okay in the business world we always say B to B when we're talking about business to business sales so that's why I referred to it as that what, what, yeah, is, the no. B, what is the B T so B T B is just our that's just our last name that's Dr. Brock Dr. Okay. Barry and Dr. Team so okay wanted to make sure if it was like a business to business kind of a setting and, and correct yeah, yeah. no I, I understand why you would say that for sure but no <laughs> it's, it's just we we, yeah, we we went out on a lamb and we used our last initials. Ah, well, that's you know people are looking at B two B, so that's probably good on the Google search. But I just <laughs> I want to. I, I, you never <laughs> you're you're on to me, Diane. Yeah. You're on to me. So. <laughs> well, it'll work. But I just uh, I wanted to hear about those case studies. I mean, what have you helped people uh, overcome? I mean, do you have like some great stories that you want to share of something that you did? To yeah, I. I, I you know, it's, it's really neat if, uh, like, if you go on our, our local website, you'll just see, we started posting uh, more of the testimonials from patients because it just, 
it's such a great tool because people, most people don't know we exist. Most people don't know our, our, our specialty, if you will, exists. And, and so it's, we're just trying to get the word out a little more that, Hey, look, there's different things that, that are available out there for, for patients to see that have been told that there's nothing that can be done. And we, we typically get the cases in that have, they've already seen, you know, they may, may have been to Mayo, Barrows. We have so many great neurology centers and healthcare centers in Arizona. We're like a hotbed for that stuff. But we get all these cases that we, you know, we've been to 30 different types of providers and nobody has been able to do stuff. So those are, we love those cases because obviously if we can help them, then, you know, then, then, you know, obviously we're, they're very grateful to us. But, um, you know, just I, a good example of a typical day, we, we deal a lot with chronic traumatic brain injury stuff. You know, there's something, I think it's around 3.1 million people in the United States have long term disability from TBI. Uh, meaning they they never did get recovery from their head injuries, hmm. and so a big one that's a hot topic right now that's all over the media is that the NFL studies with chronic traumatic encephalopathy. Yeah. You know, the last study that came out of, of the 200 plus football players that they analyzed um, with their brains after they died, of the 111 NFL players, 110 of them had CTE. So the the take home point is if you're playing football long enough, you're pretty much guaranteed that you're going to have chronic traumatic encephalopathy. And in essence, to just kind of break it down and in simple terms, if you look at the brain of a CTE, it looks almost identical to the brain of an Alzheimer's patient. Huh. They're basically one and the same. You could almost make the argument that it's, it's you know the the overlap there is is um, pretty thick. So so the then you look at a case like that and say, well, those those patients, you know, every, everyone that plays in the NFL is doomed for this that's what the stats are showing so i'll just talk about and, and anyone i mentioned their name they've given me permission um you know i have written permission and signed that, that i can use their name so um one in particular was fred wakefield he played um all the way through and he played for the arizona cardinals and the oakland raiders for eight years mm-hmm. and he was an offensive lineman so most people don't know this but the linemen are actually the ones that are actually that they actually take the the most hits and the, the the hardest head stuff you know everyone thinks the running backs and wide receivers are the ones that take the biggest beating out there, but it's, it's actually the linemen. So Fred played, and when he came to see me, he was in dire straits. His body was going downhill. He, he couldn't get through a morning without having to take a nap. He couldn't work. His wow. gut, his brain gut axis was completely off. Like he couldn't eat any foods. He'd become, he started to become intolerant to all kinds of foods and whatnot. So, and then looking at all his brain studies, you know, when we do functional testing, like balance testing on force plate, or when we do VNG stuff, which we can look at at function of the frontal lobes and the different parts of the brain, we do all these advanced, you know, objective biomarkers in an office. When he came to see us, he was just a mess from top to bottom. All his brain testing was a mess. All his cognitive testing was a mess. All his gut axis stuff, his thyroid, his his uh, blood panels, all that stuff. He was a mess as a lot of these NFL guys are. And by the time we discharged him and finished with him, he had zero gut symptoms. He was back working. He's working now in a, in a very complex job. All of his um, markers are stable now, if you look at all his brain analysis and whatnot. And he's back to living the full life that he wanted to and without symptoms. So, um, you know, that kind of stuff, you know, in, in the typical model that we're using, you, know, you know, if you go say the allopathic model, for lack of a better term, um, that a lot of that stuff is not amenable to surgical or, or pharmaceutical intervention. So we were able to take all those functional uh, methods and apply it to him and get his life back for him. And, uh, you know, do can I say with certainty that we changed his brain makeup as far as that, that Alzheimer's type presentation? I can't say that. But all I know is that all his objective markers and his cognitive testing is now stable. So, you know, say what you will about that. But, he, you know, we gave him his life back. Wow. Um, another good example is, you know, just looking at uh, a couple of recent cases that were referred to me from different physicians in Arizona. The last two cases I got that were diagnosed with Alzheimer's, um, and I, you know, I'm careful in saying that because it's truly diagnosed Alzheimer's disease. It's, you know, you, you do histological studies. So um, referencing as Alzheimer's like dementia is actually the proper terminology. But the last two cases that were sent to me, they, they were in cognitive decline. They came in with, there's a there's a standardized test. It's a cognitive impairment test called an MMSE. And it's just to look at their level of cognitive impairment. And, and both of these cases recently that were referred, one was referred by a cardiologist, another one by another uh, chiropractor here down in Tucson. 
um, those two cases that came in, they had scores of 15, which is considered moderate cognitive impairment. And by the time we were done with them, both of the cases were above 25, which is considered within, you know, that's a normal, <clears throat> normal level for the MMSE exam. And these, the, even more importantly, it's not just these numbers thrown around, is that, you know, the, the one patient, for example, he um, has, he's walking again without uh, support, like a cane or walker, that kind of thing. His memory is back. He remembers all his family members again, things like that. You know, basically, his sister told me that thank you for giving me my brother back. Uh, wow. You know, he's now he's now doing all these things that he had lost. So, and you know, you're going to have detractors out there that say, well, maybe it was coincidence. Maybe well, I I don't know. I mean, if if, if it is coincidence, I'm 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 pretty good at making coincidences happen. So, <laughs> uh, you know, it's uh-huh. so I, I get it. There's always going to be the detractors out there that, that want to say, well, that didn't work. That didn't work. But you know, I, I challenge you people to, to, to come look at our office and, and you can see firsthand, not just on the subject of stuff, you know, like, yeah, you know, the patient's family is saying his memory is better, but on all the objective markers that we use as well, too. Well, that's interesting, as I was thinking about uh, when you were talking about the football players and, and, and your examples, it made me think of Muhammad Ali, who happened to live a couple doors down from me, and he, what he'd gone through uh, uh, with, what he had Parkinson's, I think, right? Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, now, is I'm sure fighters and, and different people, all these head injury situations. I mean, what, what do you, I mean, is, are they going through chiropractic manipulations? Are you putting the uh, things on their head to make uh, them look at lights? What are they, what are you doing with these? Yeah, that's, well, it's, it's all of the above, you know, quite uh-huh. candidly, um, I can say one thing I can say about chiropractic is it's got such a powerful influence on the nervous system mm-hmm. that a lot of our patients can't handle standard chiropractic or mm-hmm. at least at the beginning, because, when you adjust, say, someone's spine, it has a huge influence on the central nervous system. And that's that's why chiropractic has even survived all this time in spite of all their headwind and stuff, is that it's a very powerful neurological tool, but we get a lot of very unstable cases. So we may have to uh, either work into chiropractic stuff or, you know, build up to it and that kind of thing. But no, it, it's, you know, again, just using a multimodal approach, you know, one of our big things, uh, just as one example, is laser therapy. You know, they're one of the reasons I gravitated towards Ericonia lasers. They are perfectly suited for brain based therapies. Because if you look at all the major breakdown in the brain cells, um, the, the destruction of the mitochondria, the inflammation from glial cells, the, um, you know, blood flow to the brain, all these different things that are tied into these neurological disorders. Uh, these these class two lasers are very well suited to help uh, mitigate a lot of those processes. Like they've been shown to mitigate things like amyloid beta placking, like that that plaque buildup. That's one of the hallmark signs of brain degeneration. Lasers are showing in studies to actually be protective for that. As a matter of fact, I just um, pr- I'm presenting this weekend for Erconian, and, and you know one of the slides I have is showing that it's even breaking down placking. So it's not even just protecting for it. There's potential. Uh, that it's breaking it down. And, and we actually have a study coming from Ericonia on Alzheimer's as a monotherapy, so I'm excited about that. But so the, we do a lot of laser therapy. We do a lot of um, supplement rehab, you know, so if we need to do things to decrease inflammation, we may be working with things like turmeric and omega-3 fatty acids and all these different, different uh, nutraceuticals, if you will. Dietary changes are a big one. You know, we may put patients on different types of elimination diets or you know, immune triggering diets that will help uh, decrease their systemic inflammation and help their gut out. We definitely do a lot of gut stuff, you know, probiotic use, different strains, things like that. Um, we do a lot of brain-based stimulation. We may use things to stimulate different neurons in the brain, like somatosensory evoked potentials or visual evoked potentials or auditory therapy. So it really just depends. Like, so we can come at it from every angle, either systemically or externally, to stimulate the nervous system and to, to stabilize their, their internal workings, their physiology. It just depends on how the patient presents, though. Everything is individualized medicine. We cannot, you know, there's no cookie-cutter recipe for anything we do, and that's part of where you, you get results in neurology. Is every case that comes in, even if you line up 10 traumatic brain injuries, you're going to have 10 different treatment plans for it. Mm-hmm. for them so we base everything on individual needs individual findings and that kind of thing well so who's your typical uh, i mean i know you you have a practice in arizona but do you uh, focus uh, your business outside of arizona i know you speak 
nationally and internationally. But uh, who are you trying to reach your, with your message? I mean, is it just the local area? Are you looking for outside people? No, we we get we get in what are called intensives. So a lot of you'll notice a lot of people that have our training um, of the centers around the United States. We typically get people that fly in to see us. You know, just last week alone, I had um, two of my cases were. Uh, cases that flew in from California and they just spent the week, you know, about 10 days here and they just went through intensive therapies while they're here and then went and then go back to California. So, um, you know, we, we attract from all over, you know, in the, in the United States, we'll get cases that come in from, from all over. So it's not just in, you know, a, a local a geographic thing. Um, and that, and you'll see that across the board, you know, all, all the big centers that do what we do. Um, we'll get that as well. Like Cerebrum in Dallas is a good example. They they get a lot of stuff flown in. You know, and some some of them some of the clinics are big enough that they get international stuff. So it just depends on on um, you know the the doctors that are at the centers and that kind of thing. Well, okay. So so somebody wants to reach you. Is there one website or do you have multiple websites? How can people find out more about what you do? Well, our our clinic website is azchironeuro.com. And that has all of our, you know, like I said, if you want to get our, our contact information, our location, um, whatnot, that's all on, on that website. Our new, with that BTB Health Systems, that's uh, btbhealthsystems.com. And we are launching our big opening uh, seminar, and it's actually on neurodegeneration, which is perfect, obviously, for our topics today. Um, that's going to be in October, October 20th. So the, you can go to the website there. We're taking pre-registration right now for that. And then all of my Erconia stuff is on their website as well, too. So it's uh, erconia.com. That's E-R-C-H-O-N-I-A.com. And if you look up on their seminar drop down, you will see all of my seminars. So, yeah, I think I'm scheduled. Last I looked, I'm scheduled to speak in about 24 weekends next year, I believe. So it's going to wow. be... It's going to be a busy year getting the message out, but you know, I, I, I'm on, like I said, I, I'm on a mission. I, I really want um, to, to make an impact and change the way that neurological cases are being handled, and all, uh, you know, that's, so that's I'm, I'm doing my best to get that message out there. Well, I really appreciate you taking some time to be on my show because I know you're a busy guy, and I've really enjoyed talking about all this. And I hope everybody checks out your information. Thanks for being on the show. Thanks, Diane. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. And we'll be right back after this message. 